Is the reason that you aren't losing body fat due to you not being in ketosis? Well, we'll be answering that through a few studies on the topic, but before people who eat carbohydrates roll their eyes, uh, it does make mechanistic sense, doesn't it? I mean, let me back up. For those unaware of what ketosis is, ketosis is simply a state in which your liver is producing molecules called ketones from fat molecules. These ketones are ejected out of the liver and can be used by a variety of tissues to sustain them. Since carbohydrates have to be very low for this to happen, we're talking 5% or less of your diet, it means that the same fat molecules that you store in your fat tissue need to be expelled and sent to the liver, like a bad student to the principal to then be converted into a good student, I mean, ketone. So if your fat cells are dumping more fat molecules, then that would mean that we're losing more body fat, doesn't it? Well, mechanistically, that makes a lot of sense. And I sometimes read comments like this, which might give you the impression it is necessitous for us to be in this ketosis state, elevated blood ketones to truly experience optimal fat loss or fat loss in general. Fortunately, we can lean on studies like this one that strictly compare a ketogenic or very low carbohydrate ketosis promoting diet to a higher carbohydrate diet. To be clear, this higher carbohydrate diet is still low carbohydrate, just not ketogenic. The ketogenic diet consists of less than 5% carbohydrates, and we can see the ketone levels rise significantly. The vertical axis is the beta hydroxybutyrate, which is one of the ketones that our liver produces. And the horizontal axis is the number of weeks and measurements of blood ketones. It's probably obvious to you now, but uh, you can see that the ketone levels only rise in the ketogenic diet and stay flat for the low carb, but not ketogenic diet. Okay, so that would mean that one condition has the requisite ketosis state with ketone levels 10 times higher than the non-ketogenic diet. So then it will lead to fat loss, while the non-ketogenic diet will not. At least that's what we can assume. Like a good scientist, fat loss data is there. Looking at the body fat data, we can see that the amount of total body fat on the vertical axis and the three different times of measurement on the horizontal. The black bars are the non-ketogenic condition and the white bars are the ketogenic ketosis condition. If the bars shrink, that means that these people had less total body fat. And what do they do? They shrink. But oddly enough, not just in the ketogenic condition, but also in the non-ketogenic, which is really odd because their ketone levels were extremely low. So I don't know, either the mechanism that we described earlier is wrong and the ketones are not necessary for fat loss, or this data somehow is incorrect. Fortunately, here at Physionic, we don't let our biases dictate our conclusion. So, I'm opting for the former explanation. Now, that said, if we look at the data again, you could argue that the ketogenic diet lost more body fat, but statistically speaking, that was not the case. However, in scientific honesty, the study included only 20 participants. And for those into statistics, those lines coming out of the bars are standard deviations. So it's entirely possible the results might indicate a difference in the study if it had more participants, increasing the statistical power of the analysis. Still, no doubt both groups did lose body fat. And even if it might be questioned if one did better than the other. So it shatters the idea that blood ketones need to be elevated to experience fat loss but it does not shatter the idea that optimal fat loss or greater fat loss might be more attainable through a ketosis state. Fortunately, we aren't limited to one study, so we can lean on more extreme studies. For example, when looking at more people included in the study, as in this study, wherein people consumed almost 600% more carbohydrates than the ketogenic diet, and they were on each diet for a year we see the same results. Full disclosure, I'm only showing you part of this table of data, the part that actually includes the fat mass data, our outcome of interest. The LC on the left side is the low carb ketogenic like condition, 
with higher ketone levels. And the LF is the low fat, high carbohydrate condition. We can focus our attention on comparing the baseline values versus 52 weeks later. Both groups experienced significant fat loss. And additionally, the statistics firmly indicate no difference as seen by a p-value here of 0.304. If it were statistically different, it would be below 0.05. So elevated ketones necessary for optimal fat loss? It doesn't look like it. Now, when not controlling for energy intake, we can find studies that show improved weight and fat loss with ketosis promoting diets. But when controlling for energy intake, the effect disappears. So where's our mechanism model broken? Well. I did what a lot of health influencers do, tell you part of the story and button it up like it's a finished product. Unfortunately, while I see it all too often, in this case, I left out the fact that if you're cutting out carbohydrates, which is necessary for ketones to be produced by the liver, you likely are increasing your fat intake to make up for the energy deficit. Remember, we're looking at it from an energy deficit equated scenario. Otherwise, we can't tease out cause and effect. So if dietary fat intake increases, guess where some of those ketones are coming from? Not as much from stored fat molecules released by the fat cells like we discussed earlier, but a mixture from dietary and stored fat, which cuts down on that amount taken from the fat cells. In the end, ketones or not, the end result is the same. The main reason people get so confused about ketones, low carb, and fat loss is because it's terribly and sometimes irresponsibly explained using the hormone insulin as the end all be all of fat loss. So why don't we address the science of insulin in this next video? I'll speak with you over there.